It's been almost 3 weeks since my last Mechanics Mondays Wednesday edition video. I'm sorry for disappearing since then, I am guilty on all charges, so to at least partially redeem myself, I will buy a D&D related gift for one qualified viewer of this video. Keep watching, I'm going to tell you how to qualify once you understand the context. Without further ado, let's kick things off again with this series. On that last video, there were a few comments pointing out several potential issues with part of the combo used to decapitate your enemies, so I figured it was time to cover it as part of a more general analysis of a spell called Nistul's Magic Aura. At first glance there's nothing wrong with this spell, a second level illusion that can manipulate how magic and non-magic items appear to magical sensors or circumvent spells detecting or triggering off of specific creature types. There's no saving throw against it, so it can be a very useful tool for DMs to build storylines and narratives around. In all sorts of ways. Just like you piling onto those engagement buttons down below is a plotline useful for the YouTube algorithms evaluation of this video and this channel. Player characters can sometimes find creative and fun uses for this spell as well. A non-metagaming DM is required to pull it off in most imaginable cases, which is a common issue shared by most illusion spells in the game. However, things do get confusing and ambiguous really quickly once you start peeling off the surface layers. There's a common theme, a pattern that can be observed in the description of most 5th edition D&D spells. It usually starts with a sentence or two describing the general summarized purpose and effect of the spell, a little bit of fluff and theme to better understand what the spell is supposed to do, before delving deeper into the specific mechanics. Nistul's magic aura is no exception in this regard, with its first sentence being, quote, you place an illusion on a creature or an object you touch so that divination spells reveal false information about it. In and of itself there is no issue here, however two words in there stick out like a sore thumb, divination spells. This spell is apparently only supposed to work against those, of course that's not really the case otherwise I wouldn't be making this video, right? If you take a closer look down at the two examples given for the mask spell effect specifically, both clearly fall outside of these bounds. Divine sense is not even a spell, it's a paladin core class feature. Symbol on the other hand is a spell, but it doesn't belong to a divination school, it's a protective abjuration spell. So right there it's immediately obvious parts of Nistol's magic aura spell description don't really match and align with each other, in fact they are quite contradictory. Nistol's magic aura core design intent was and is to be used as a catch-all solution against all kinds of magical sensors and magic that detects creature types. This is rather clear, however, what exactly constitutes detecting creature types. What does it mean exactly? If we re-examine the symbol spell, nowhere in the description of that one can you find words detect and type. It does state it can be triggered, it can be activated based on creatures of physical kinds, so that's just a different way to say type, I guess. But then what's the difference between that and the infamous controversial interaction with the magic jar spell, the one that I talked about in the previous video. If we read the description description of every lich wannabe's favorite 5th edition spell, it requires a humanoid body. While it's definitely not the same kind of interaction, detecting a creature type is still some kind of passive requirement for the spell to work. So why wouldn't Nistol's magic aura allow you to bypass that limitation? You clearly cannot cast it on a non-humanoid, so it is perfectly plausible to make an argument that some kind, some sort of detection occurs when you cast this spell. Magic Jar isn't even the only culprit here. What about Anime Dead, another spell so dear to all lich lovers out there? While the interaction is probably highly unlikely, it isn't impossible. In fact, I would daren't say it's likely to occur if the DM uses Nistol's magic aura to mess with creature types and one of the players is using Anime Dead to make an army of undead minions. Heck, speaking about undead, you know how you pretty much cannot use any of the healing spells such as Cure Wounds, Healing Word and other to heal undead and constructs. Well, if we make the same argument that healing spells detect creature types because they don't affect undead and constructs, then masking a friendly undead or construct with Mistral's magic aura totally makes sense, even though it totally doesn't in interaction with cure wounds and healing word and other healing spells. I mean, we are clearly going out of the bounds of what's, I guess, intended with Nistol's magic aura. Speak with animals and speak with plants also come to mind here.
here you can mask any non-beast or non-plant into a beast or a plant with Nistul's magic aura and then have a catch-all solution to communicate with every possible type of creature out there. Now, yeah, sure, you can accomplish the same with comprehend languages and tongues, but that's two spells for normies, right? You can totally capitalize on Nistul's magic aura's crappy and unclear and confusing spell description and drive your DM mad to the point of murdering your mega munchkin character out of raw frustration. And this isn't even the end of the depths of depravity theoretically possible with this spell. Notice how mask option repeatedly mentions target when referring to, well, the target of the spell. We know from the first sentence of the spell description that you can target both creatures and objects with it. So the real kicker is using mask on an object and making it appear as a creature type. I repeat, the effect is an illusion of a creature type, but unlike false aura, which clearly only affects objects, the target of mask can, at least by rules as written, be an object. And if you really stretch this approach out, you can even allow every spell in the game that affects only creatures and not objects, such as, for example, Eldritch Blast, to actually also be able to affect objects as well. Of course, when you cast Nistul's Magic Aura on a wall, and mask it to appear as a shape changer or whatever other creature type, well, it does count as a creature, so it should be targetable by a spell that can only target creatures, such as the aforementioned Eldritch Blast, right? Of course, we are now deeply in the pits of rules lawyering hell, and there's no easy way to unravel the Gordian knot of ridiculous possibilities this spell can create. So what do we even do about it? Well, the easy way out would be to simply ban the spell and get rid of the potential headache, but that's rarely, if ever, a fair approach in my humble opinion. You can totally limit it to its intended use and simply keep it useful only for magic that directly detects creature types, instead of the detection being an indirect requirement or limitation for the magic to work, as is the case for most of the spells discussed above. The lines are still blurry here. For example, if a player decides to go down the magic circle plus planar binding route and stack Nistol's magic aura on top of that class, classic combo, if you're a DM you are basically forced to make a ruling. Magic Circle should clearly work interact with uh, Nistol's Magic Aura because its detection mechanic is very similar to that of a symbol, but then on the other hand Planar Binding detection is more akin to that of Magic Jar or any of the other spells discussed earlier in this video and that of course does fall outside of the perceived design intent and limitations of this problematic illusion spell. Letting the player go ham and munching the hell out of the spell is a slippery slope as well. If the player is reasonable, then there's no problem to begin with, but if a person is determined to go way out of the bounds of the game, you know, they will find a way to do it with this spell. And then it becomes an arms race between the DM and the player, both looking to one-up each other. Anybody who's been through those kinds of situations would know that they usually end up poorly and suck the fun out of the game completely. But the best advice I can give to you is to simply have rulings on a case-by-case -case basis, compatible with your own table and with your own players. If you're looking to use this spell in any way as or similar to what I talked about in this video, you should discuss it with the rest of the table in order to understand how far you can push the envelope. Maybe you can go ham and spam the hell out of this spell on everything and everyone, but it's also possible that you will constantly butt heads with the DM and make everyone else at the table way too uncomfortable and ruin the overall mood. Of course, a handful of these weird Nistol's magic aura spell interactions I talked about in this video are just the tip of the iceberg. So here's a challenge for you that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. One comment down below on this video describing the most ridiculous, funny, insane or just interesting combo with Nistol's Magic Aura will get pinned to the top and I will buy one book for that person on D&D Beyond as a gift. You have until December 5th to come up with the most outrageous idea you can think of so comment section is yours to spill your brains out. Also also, don't forget to mask the like, subscribe and bell icon buttons down below with Nistol's Magic Aura so that YouTube algorithm thinks I have over 9000 interactions on this video. I reserve the right to decide what the 
comment is that's gonna get rewarded, so get to it, I guess. As always, the script for this video is available on my Patreon page under the Fireball tier. It's not mandatory, it's 100% optional, but you do get access to my Patreon exclusive Discord server and other perks like suggesting and voting on new topics, so if it's worth the trouble, worth your time and worth your money, chuck a few bucks my way and support this channel over there. Special shout out to all of my current patrons, thank you for your continued support. I will get busier before year's end because there's a bunch of stuff still waiting for me to be done, so keep an eye out for new videos. With everything said and done, Min Max Munchkin out and uh, talk to you soon.